When you think of the open field, your mind instantly goes to the cavalry, the archers and the infantry, the three main troops in Rise of Kingdoms. But what if I told you Siege have really good potential? And today, I will be giving you a Siege investment plan from the earliest stages of the game up until Season 3, the latest point in the game currently. If you are interested in Siege units, I will be telling you everything you need to know about them. I'll give you commander pairing skills on those commanders. I'll give you talents. I'll give you equipment, formations. I'll give you city skins, civilizations. Everything you need to know about Siege will be in today's video. So if you want to be a Siege main, if you're just interested in the potential of Siege, you need to check out today's video. Now let's begin with Siege pairings. And in KVK1, there's really only one Siege pair that stands out, and that is Joan of Arc with Matilda of Flanders. And the reason is because all the other Siege commanders, like Queen Tamar of Georgia, is absolutely trash on the field. Ishida doesn't work with almost every single commander here, plus he has to be a secondary. Cleopatra is definitely not a good option for a commander. She's just doing healing a bit of defense, and all her stats have to be in a resource node. Sundok is just dealing tons of damage, but all her stats have to be in a resource node. So you can see right there, you've already knocked off basically five of your seven commanders, and then you're stuck with two. Matilda of Flanders and Joan of Arc. So Joan of Arc, her first thing that gives her some siege potential is yes, her active skill is not going to be buffing your siege, besides giving him a nice 50 additional rage per second for four seconds. That is 200 total rage compared to Ashida's basically at the max 120 total rage. So Joan of Arc definitely is giving you a lot more rage than Ashida. Also, Joan of Arc will be buffing your allies, and since you're stuck with one troop, you may as well benefit as much as possible from the Joan of Arc buffs for all your allied troops. So that is something nice that she is bringing to the table. That is less selfish of you. You're not really looking just to get better trades yourself, but you are buffing all of your allies. Her second skill, useless for field. Her third skill, useless for field. And then her fourth skill, you're getting 25% increased on normal attack damage. That is really, 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 really good. And that is actually probably one of the main things that gives her a power with Siege. This is not troop related. It can go with any troop and it works extremely well. Also, Joan of Arc runs the correct talent trees, which I will talk about in a minute. Her secondary commander will be Matilda of Flanders at star level 3. Do not take Matilda past 3 star levels and we'll discuss that in a second. First of all, Matilda's active skill, you're dealing a nice 750 damage factor. It is lower than most epic commanders, but as you can see, Siege are kind of behind on this. And then also, she reduces the opponent's attack by 15% for 2 seconds. Really small debuff for a really small time period, but it is a pretty good debuff overall for an epic commander, like you can't really complain. Second skill, useless for field. Third skill, you get 60% of Siege stats. That's 30% health, 30% defense. That is among the most stats on any one skill in the whole entire game. So... That is amazing. If you're running this commander, her active skill and her third skill are really the only two skills that matter because 30% health and 30% defense is going to completely shift the trades of a battle in your favor. Like that is a really large amount, especially KVK1. Those stats are crazy high. Like you'll be able to hold off a bunch of people with that. You'll probably be able to take on a YSG or even a Minamoto with that amount of stats on your commander. So that is extremely, extremely good. And her fourth skill is the reason I said don't take her past star level 3, because you don't even want to unlock this. This skill gives you troop capacity bonus at the cost of 20% attack, and if you're looking for the open field, you don't want to lose any stats, and as such, you definitely do not want to unlock this skill, since it's not giving you any benefits for the open field. You're not, like, gaining defense at the cost of attack, you're losing attack to gain troop capacity. So overall, if you want to run Matilda as a siege account, do not take her past star level 3, make sure she stays below that. Now, let's discuss talent trees. So here's the first option for a Joan of Arc talent tree, and I think that it is probably one of the better options out there. And to begin with, the reason you've gone so far in the support tree is because your only other option is the integration tree, which is a decent tree for siege troops, but it isn't that amazing. Like, I don't see it and I say, oh, that's really, really good. It's just an average tree. First of all, though, if you go with support, you're getting loose formation. That's a 9% skill damage taken reduction. You're getting emergency protection, which has a 50% chance that you gain a 15% additional skill damage reduction for the next three seconds. Right there, crazy, crazy, crazy high skill damage reductions. That is a total of around 24% skill damage reduction if you're about to be hit with an active skill and the secondary commander's skill is about to throw. Then also you get rejuvenate in the support tree, which gives you 150 rage. You get burning rage, which gives you a nice nine additional rage per turn. And also you get Expert Design, which is giving you 18% of total Siege stats for 3 talent points. For the cost of 3 talent points, you're getting 6% attack, 6% defense, and 6% health. It's not just 6% overall, it is 6% for each different stat type. So that is an amazing, amazing, amazing talent. And that's why I really wanted the support tree. It's really just because of the Expert Design talent. Then the reason I didn't go too far into the integration tree is because... It's, it's not that amazing for this build specifically. I would also recommend dropping this point of arm to the death and putting it in the gathering to get some extra march speed. But to begin with, 
For Siege, you're going in defensive formation so that whenever you lose 50% of your strength, you gain 15% defense. That is a lot of defense and that is extremely powerful. Then I went and got Steely Soul to get an extra increase of 1.5% normal attack. You're really desperate for stats here, so any stat you can get is a nice increase. I didn't go any further than that. You could have gone fresh recruits, but I think that the Steely Soul is probably going to be a little bit better since this is going to make you take more Siege on the field, which does bring a little bit more risk. Overall, though, this is probably the build I would personally run. I think it is the overall better build for a Siege build. This is the other option where you go all in on integration, pretty much. You do have to drop down all this skill damage that would be here because you've gone pretty much all in on integration. Even with these extra points, the only difference it's going to make is you will have access to loose formation. But overall, I think that if you get both of these talents for the cost of loose formation, it is a little bit better. Now, the thing is here with Aries Blessing, you are taking 10% less severely wounded units. But overall, I think you will be taking more Sev Wounds if you run this build compared to the Support Tree build, which, yeah, the Support Tree maxed out. Isn't that amazing like the actual buffer gives you? But everything else here is fairly decent, especially for Siege units, since you do get Expert Design. Now, let's discuss the tips to make Siege better in KVK 1 and 2 especially. First of all, for a Civilization, you don't really have that many options. Every other thing here is giving you a special unit for Cavalry Infantry Archers. There is no Siege Civilization I can say, oh, just go get that. If I had to pick one, you're probably going to go with the Ottoman Empire to get the active skill damage increase by 5%, which would be really good late game, and also the troop march speed by 5%. You could alternatively go with Germany to get an increase in AP recovery and troop training speed, and just stick with that since the stats on the Ottoman Empire aren't that amazing, especially in early game. It's a very minor increase, and you might as well keep the AP recovery. It's probably going to give you more overall value, and that is more of an economic stance on this, where you're looking to make your account a lot stronger economically, rather than completely on the open field. Another option is the Vikings increasing your counterattack damage, not only for infantry, but for everything, and also your troop loads. So if you're pillaging cities, I guess you're going to do pretty good. And then France is another option because you're getting increased troop health, and you're also getting hospital healing speed. So that is the really overall recommendations I can give you for civilizations. Everything else here definitely is nowhere near as good. Byzantium, I guess, is an option for the hospital capacity. But overall, I think the healing speed on France is definitely going to be way more valuable. Then let's discuss city skins because they're a bit unique. If you're running Siege, here's the city skin you run. It's called the default city skin. And you might be thinking, why would I do that? Like the other city skins all give you an overall buff. Well, the reason is there's no Siege city skin. You could run a city skin because it looks nice. I mean, that's certainly an option because a city skin in a Siege account is completely useless. We don't really have any city skins till the late game where you get some generic city skins that are really available to you. Overall, you have only got stat for stat city skins. Once you get late game, there's going to be some skins that give you skill damage boosts or give you just overall troop attack boost or troop defense boost. But until then, there's really not much. Like you can see here, here's a defense boost and training speed boost skin. This is going to give you 3% defense, 3% training speed. And this is a skin that would affect Siege. Everything else here though, is not Siege related. Out of every city skin in the game, there is not a single epic skin that is going to give you some sort of a Siege buff. There is just none that exists. So city skins, you can just run whatever you think looks nice, or you can just literally run the default skin to pretty much have no downsides, but no technical upsides. Now let's discuss Siege equipment, which is where Siege get the biggest advantage out of everything in the whole entire game. If you're running Siege KVK 1 and 2, you're pretty lucky in the regard that you don't have to spend any gems or gold heads on anything but possibly equipment. The equipment sets for Siege right now are absolutely insane. Overall, every single Siege set here is giving you way more stats than any other set in the game. You're getting 10% defense on boosts, 15% health on the pants, you're getting 10% defense on gloves, another 15% attack on the chest plate, and another 15% attack on the helmet. If you get every single set piece here, you get 18% increase in Siege March Speed, plus the iconic stats. And then also for the set effects, when you get two pieces, you get 5% increase Siege Unit Defense, and also 5% increased Skill Damage at the four-piece set. You will have noticed that there is no Siege Weapon. That is because, well, Lilith thought it would be too OP to have a six-piece set bonus, plus the Siege Weapon. So the only Siege Weapon currently is the Epic One, and, and this weapon does beat out the Legendary Leadership Weapon just by a little bit. I think the Legendary Leadership Weapon is not worth the extra materials, plus if you talent the Knight's Oath Sworn Bow, it's way, way better than the Legendary version because you will be getting yourself 3% March Speed plus the same amount of attack, if not more, than the Scepter of the Glorious Goddess. So I highly recommend just running this Epic Weapon till pretty much the end of time or until we get some proper Siege Weapons. There is also a pretty much full Siege set of Epic Gear that you could run really early game, or if you don't want to go too hard in on Siege just in case you don't end up using them, you can get the Knight Steel Diadem. This is going to give you around 10% health and around 4 or 5% March Speed when talented. Then also you've got the Siege Chestplate, which is giving you another around 10% attack and another 4% March Speed when talented. And then also you've got the Siege Gloves, 
which give you another 5.5% defense, around 7 when talented. And if you go to the next piece, you're getting another 10% defense, which is really, really nice. And then finally, if you talent the boots, you get around 7 or so percent health. So right there, a bunch of stats compared to other pieces. It is almost on par with some pieces, but overall, the siege equipment in the early game is extremely good compared to anything else. And even in the late game, it's a step above everything else in the game. So that's what brings Siege the most value. It's definitely their equipment, and you need to focus down on your Siege equipment if you want to be a Siege main. Now, once you reach KVK2, pretty much nothing changes. The only difference is you may have some of these other gathering commanders like Cleopatra, Sundok, Ishida at a higher level, and you can test around with them a little bit, putting them in resource nerds, trying to trick people into hitting them. That is certainly an option, but overall, you're probably still going to be stuck running the Joan of Arc with the Matilda of Flanders until you reach Season 3. Also, equipment in KVK2, nothing changes. Anything else in KVK2 really doesn't change besides you get access to the state form. And in here, you're going to get access to the V formation, which is extremely important when we discuss Siege. When we are talking about Siege, V formation in the end game is going to be literally everything. I recommend that every single point you get that goes towards armaments, you completely devote to the V formation to get the best one you possibly can, because it's going to be pretty much another thing that makes Siege as powerful as they can be. First of all, if you ever see anything related to the V formation at this patch, make sure you instantly get it. If you are looking to reroll any armaments, make sure they are legendary inscribed V formation armaments with some amount of siege stats, since that's going to be really, really good. However, the issue with the V formation is it's not useful on the commanders you currently have. So I recommend stashing the V formation armaments until you reach season three, which is only one season away. Anything else you get that's related to any other formation, I personally recommend arch formation for KVK2 siege. Then just put the siege related stats on that formation. But make sure that while you are in KVK2, you are preparing for KVK3 where the V formation will become pretty much the most valuable thing that you will get access to in the whole entire game with Siege. Now that you've arrived in Season 3, you get access to all the amazing Siege commanders. That's right, there's two. And these are going to be the two commanders you run until more commanders come out, which who knows if that's ever going to happen. To begin with, Margaret's active skill. For three seconds, range normal attacks for this commander deal a nice 50% increased all damage. That's a crazy amount of stats. She also deals damage factor of 500 every single second for the next three seconds. If the targets are not within melee range, that is reduced by 50%. So do keep that in mind. You are going to be dealing a lot less damage factor. However, the all damage she's dealing is going to be the exact same. Her second skill, you gain a siege unit attack bonus 20% and siege unit march speed bonus 20%. March speed is fairly useless when you're going to keep her in tower form, which is what you'll mainly do since you are running B formation. But it is a nice boost still, giving you a nice bit of extra sustain if you are trying to run away from people. She also does have a 10% chance to increase her normal attack by 20% for 3 seconds. Can trigger once every 5 seconds. Really, really nice skill right there. Once again, you can see Margaret is definitely high in on her white damage. Third skill, in ranged attack mode, she deals an extra 20% skill damage. So that's going to bring up her skill damage a nice tad bit more. And also, she has a 30% chance to reduce the target's march speed by 30% for 3 seconds. This may make it harder for them to run out of the range of your attacks, which is really good. And also, it's going to buff pretty much everyone else around you as they can chase down people way easier if you are picking them off. Fourth skill, increase the damage this commander deals by around 5%. So not that amazing of a buff, but it is still there. And then also 10% chance to reduce the target troops defense by 40% for 3 seconds. That's an amazing debuff on a passive skill slot. Actually really, really good. And for a commander who's doing ranged attacks, they could just shoot anyone and pretty much give them that debuff. It's amazing. So... Definitely a very, very nice debuff right there, and it's definitely good to go all in on Margaret. If you're going to get her, you're probably going to have to expertise her, because that's where she gets all her effectiveness. She also does increase the defense of siege units on her expertise by 10%, and when taking damage, she has a chance to heal herself, healing factor 500. Healing, not that amazing, but it is an option that she does get, and it is something I guess you could add to her kit for AoE farming, maybe. Overall, though, it's not that important. Then secondary to Margaret, we have Barbara, and the reason is secondary, because Margaret has the support tree, and we discussed the support tree, and I will go over a talent build for Margaret in a minute. First of all, Barbara's active skill does way more damage factor than Margaret. He does 2,000 damage factor to the target troop. Keep in mind, once again, if they're not within melee range, it's only 1,000 damage factor, but still a very, very nice damage factor right there. Also, next thing on his list, he increases the attack of siege units by 15%, the defense by 15%, and also deals a 10% increase to ranged attack damage. So that is really, really nice. 10% increase to ranged normal attack is really, really good. Plus 30% of siege stats on one skill is fairly nice. Second skill in range mode, he takes around 10% less damage from normal attacks. Really nice right there. And then ranged normal attacks also have a 10% chance to deal additional skill damage, 500. To the target, this is going to trigger once every 5 seconds. Stock standard, instant damage right there. Finally, he also increases the health of siege units by 20%. When taking damage, he has a chance to 
gain an increase in 40% defense to siege, really nice. And then also 5% damage increase for three seconds. So you get 40% defense, 5% damage for three seconds. You can trigger once every five seconds. Overall, fairly decent right there. I'm not saying it's like amazing stats, but it is a decent skill. Barbara's expertise, increase the attack of siege units by 10%. And whenever they use an active skill, he will gain 50 rage per second for the next three seconds. Really nice right there. I actually do like the extra rage gain. Since you are running the support tree, it's nice to get even more rage after your active skill. With all the skills out of the way, like I mentioned before, Margaret will be the primary and I will discuss the talents for her. Unfortunately, I can't show you a proper Margaret build since I don't have her at level 60 and she's not on any websites I could find. But here's what I'd recommend. Go all into the engineering tree, get Forbearance, I think is how you say that. It's really, really good, and along the way, you're getting pretty much all the best siege stats you could possibly wish for on a siege commander. Then, make sure you get swift maneuvers, get that right up to level 3, but do not touch ebullient, which makes you deal extra damage to arrow towers, which is completely useless. Then, you go into the support tree, get expert design, that is the main thing, and then take rejuvenate to 2 out of 3. Then, put the rest of your points going down into loose formation, and if you can, get emergency protection, but I think you'll be out of points at around loose formation. And that, and that is the overall recommendation for a siege build. And also, now that you've reached Season of Conquest, you get access to a bunch of accessories. And the main accessories I recommend are Ring of Doom, which is 100% has to be on your siege march. And also, either Horn of Fury if you want the extra rage, or you get Concealed Dagger. I think Concealed Dagger will be better off here. Debuffing your opponents more from a range attack is going to be really, really, really powerful. I also recommend if you are running the V formation, which you pretty much will be running on a Margaret and Barbara combination, try and hide behind something that people would have to walk around. For example, if someone wanted to attack me, but I was hiding behind a city, I can still shoot them perfectly fine through that city. But if they want to hit me, they have to walk around that city. So in that time, it may save you a ton of severely wounded troops. It may save you, for example, the chance of getting away, because if you're in front of that city or to the left or the right, they could pretty much attack you instantly. But if you're behind the city, they have to walk around, which could take up to an extra 3 seconds, and it takes around 10-15 seconds to get out of the V formation, and those 3 seconds could be the complete difference between losing a full march of 300,000 T5 Siege, or just losing maybe even a couple thousand, or none at all. So make sure if you are running Siege, you position yourself tactically. Obviously, you will get better at this as time goes on, but my main recommendation is hiding behind something, especially if you're running the V formation, which everyone should be doing if you're running Siege in Season of Conquest. It's also important to note, you will not be the main guy on the open field. Like, you're not going to be up in the battle, punching people's heads in. You're just going to be in the back, either pretty much defending the objective, or just annoying the crap out of your enemies and supporting yourself. It's going to be difficult to city pop with Siege as well, so keep that in mind. But the thing is, if you run Siege, you can fill every single garrison and rally till you run out of every other troop. So if you're just running Siege, you only need your Siege units, and that's pretty nice. For example, since I only run Archers, I kill all my infantry and cavalry pretty much every single KVK, because I don't need them, and you can do the same thing if you're running mainly Siege units. So that is a nice benefit of running Siege. I also hope that if you made it to the end of the video, you do know that you're supposed to save your gold sculptures from the early game, since there are no good commanders, and then the day you reach Season 3, you just max Margaret and try and max Barbaro the second he comes around in the Wheel of Fortune. And on the topic of VIP, I know it's extremely difficult trying to get up in the levels of VIP. You can see right here, I have an account at VIP0, and you might be thinking, oh, you just made a new account to show this. Well, yes, but no. You know why? Like I said in the start of the video, I've made a seed restart. It's been at least three, four months in the making, and it's pretty much gotten zero views when I first made the video. So this is my way of telling you guys, the siege restart is here. I'm currently in Kingdom 3263, and we're preparing to jump to our final kingdom within the next couple of days. So if you guys are very interested in me running a pure siege account, that means doing KVK with only siege, playing the whole early game once again for you guys in the early game, let me know in the comments. I'm extremely excited to stream a bunch of battles that could be happening since the early game in any kingdom is always a crazy time. Full of civil wars, traders, everything in the early game is super interesting. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments. It would be really interesting. And keep an eye out for any content I post about my Siege, either in my Discord server or in the community posts. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.